These are two sticks of RAM. For those of you who have never seen sticks without fancy heatsinks, welcome. This is how poor we were 20 years ago when every single PCB looked like this. Now we are going to remedy that but first, wait, there it is, the mark of quality. Didn't even spot that until I started editing. The manufacturer uses a Gmail account. That's how you know they're really reputable manufacturer when they care so much for their brand. This is a bit of a frivolous video if I'm being honest, it's RGB fine some dull green RAM sticks. It's the quintessential stupid thing that they usually advise people to steer clear of, but the bottom line is that a fairly high end build with a 3800 and a Ryzen 5800X does make this green sticks feel really out of place. The kit I bought to fix this is from a company called Easy DIY Fab, which seems to be one of the large Chinese accessories manufacturers. They do fans, all sorts of RGB and ARGB kits, heat sinks, risers, etc. etc. Oh, and this is a nice bonus, a long black strand of hair. Yay for extras from China, I guess? Instead of wasting time with that awful manual, I should preface this by saying that DDR4 does not actually require a heatsink. Not if you do not push it above 1.4 volts, which is really about as much as you should be pumping through DDR4 in 24-7 operation anyways. With the vast majority of modules running at around 1.35 volts when overclocked with XMP, while JDEX specifications call for 1.2 volts, which is what these modules use when running at their rated speed of 3200 Mbps. In all cases, the heat sinks are more aesthetic than anything else. Fun little tidbit, you might also see that transfer speed called out as 3200 MHz, which is flat out wrong, or even more baffling 3200 MB transfer per second, which as far as I can tell is a unit made up specifically for RAM transfer speeds and, well, means nothing. In the beginning I thought the mega transfer is somehow related to megabits, I found an excellent video from Billzoid that increased my respect for the guy about a thousand times, I will link it below as he does a much better job of explaining it than I ever could. Now, I've done videos about memory tuning in the past and I'm not going to go in depth here, but the bottom line is that this kit does 3200 Mbps at 1.2 volts, meaning it really shouldn't have any trouble doing 3600 Mbps at 1.35 volts. At the end of the day, all XMP does is provide an overclocking table with timings and voltages. This is more or less guaranteed to work on Intel systems and AMD found on the Modeboard QVL list, but other than that, it might work or, well, it might not. And as far as I'm concerned, this is no different than using an XMP kit that isn't on a QVL list. After fiddling a bit with the heatsinks and boring you with the irrelevant details, I must admit I don't hate these heatsinks anymore, or maybe I don't hate them quite quite as much, there will always be a level of reticence to do something PC related just for the looks from my side. I don't particularly like the logo printed on the front and I might attempt to use a sharpie to make it go away, but apart from that, the construction is solid, the retention mechanism is simple and efficient consisting of two screws and it's user friendly even coming with a screwdriver in the package. The thermal strips that you have to install do have peelable plastic on both sides, which you will have to carefully remove. Just use something like a screwdriver or a knife to separate them, otherwise you might damage them. It's not the heat transfer that I'm worried about, it's the fact that they are used as compressible patterns to hold the heatsink on. That's as much as there is to it. Because they are metal and they do come with heat transfer pads, I'm sure they will keep the memory cooler than it would have been otherwise. But probably not by very much seeing as the surface area hasn't increased dramatically. Okay, had enough of that, I want my proper screwdriver back please. I must admit I was genuinely apprehensive when I started them first time and I even captured it on camera just in case the LEDs go poof or something does happen to them. Once in Windows and properly configured I'm happy to report that they work as expected. If you want to see the full build using these RAM sticks it will be up on the channel in the next few days. And if you manage to stick around until now here's a quick sneak peek of what that will look like. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Thank you.